we're off. Talcum powder. There's a wee stone in between us. Oh, I'm hungry. Oh, that's solid. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. So I'm just in the field of rape at the moment. Big break now. It's a drill working there. Bit of an annoying one this morning, that calf there. It's got a sore foot. See, back leg, just not want to put weight on it there. I've got him here, he's up there, Dad's holding the headstock shut. Hoof's there, so hopefully that's the issue. He'll be fine now. There he goes, back leg's fine now. Thankfully, that was just an easy one. That's the best result, sore leg, we stone in between the hoof. Straight away, immediately, he's fine. There wasn't any cut or anything like that. We did give it a wee spray, wee spray. At the bar just now, hopefully should be finished soon. So this is the second last panel. I'm using another panel just to use it as a jig to run off of. Got more sheets and uh, boards up there getting cut. And there's two that need to be painted. And then once we've got another one made after this one, that'll be all five. They can all get painted. And I think it's ready for assemble. Some of the steel needs painted as well. So that's it, five worktops ready. Uh, two of them still need sanded down a wee bit and then I can varnish them. Panels all done now. They've all had two coats. Uh, I think that'll be plenty. I can always touch it up if not. It's still kind of drying out here, so I'm just gonna leave them. The weather's to be all right tonight, so leave them out. Sun's just the way down. Also, the fact that they're dark, um, when the two pieces come up together and they're not dead flush, cause I've made it and it's not perfectly accurate because it's a dark strip on a dark surface it's harder to see than if it was a light strip and a wee dark line you'd notice much more so it should hide any blemishes or any inaccuracies so to paint the metal frame fiddle about with lights otherwise i'm done question of the day so a real easy one should be you should know this one everyone should know this one what's that a yellow thing so you'll see tomorrow just soon because this, this will be two days into one. Um, tomorrow we need to finish clearing out the shed because we might get combining on Tuesday. It's Monday tomorrow. We might get the first of the winter barley cut, depending on, see how it looks like. So I'll see you first thing in the morning to feed the animals. Holly, I'll start with Holly. There she goes, there's Holly. Holly, come on. Looking good this morning, eh? They're all looking well, calves are all looking well. Creek feeders getting towards empty. We'll fill it up at some point. Don't want it to run dry. Russell from Sellers is going to come out and set up the GPS. That's in the combine there, don't have a clue what he's doing. So I'm jumping in this tractor, I'll put the header onto this tractor. We need to empty the shed because we'll probably go and try a wee bit of barley with the combine just to check everything's working properly. And then depending on how it's coming off, what moisture, we might just keep going. Combine all day. Um, so that's a general plan for today. Getting hoist up in the cage to the fan up here. See, there's a bit of greenery growing through the winter. Well, maybe not in the winter, but right now. So we'll clear it out. That's it cleared out now. You can see all the stuff on the ground. Taking the sheets now off of the pit. We put sheets on it over the winter so dust and mice and anything like that can't get in it. Pit back for action. It's just taking the combine outside ready for uh, sellers coming. Check the GPS, set it all up. Oh, getting ready now. It's been going over bits in the combine. <laughs> going around it all. Now I'm going to shift the head right, heading out to the field and set up the GPS. Different routes and whatnot, and 
and it's kind of calibrating itself so it knows how much steering it can play with. So it's done that, now he's doing an AB line, so it'll figure out a dead straight line. Now it's working fine. Although there's loads of tracks all over this nice grass field now. That's a new Vario table, so that moves in and out depending on what you're wanting. That's the grain hatch closing there, so that's where all the grain that's harvested is collected before it goes into the trailers. Covered everything up in, well, these rubber chokes with the uh, talcum powder. Just gives it a shine to it, so it beds in nicely. We're all. <laughs> First time with a header, first time with a combine. Get some winter barley cut. Steering's all set up, machine's ready to go. Let's go. You can see all the talcum powder flying everywhere and leaving a dusty white trail all over the field. Looks good and next to the big shed. We're in the field now, this is the field of combining today, a 50 acre or so, should should get it all today, weather permitting. About ready for action here, this is the bar, you can see it, it's really dead and dry, it's just great. Take a wee seed. Oh, that's solid. That'll be good and dry. 15, 16, 15, 16%. We're off. Harvest 2021, 20, so go, go, go. There should be some straw coming in the back, we're needing it. We're down to one bale. There you go, there comes the straw. Oh, what a beast. Quite a bit of straw there. 25% more actually, because the header's bigger. I'll just reverse this up, park it along the hedge. Kev's got his tractor waiting there. He'll get the first load. Gonna take two tankfuls off, go to the weigh bridge and weigh it so we can calibrate the quantimeter on it. Oh, you beauty. Perfect weather too. So this field is part of farm number three. Just over there, that other golden field, that's farm number four. So the crop over there is a seed crop and there's another field back there with a seed crop. So we can't spray that with a Roundup because um, it can affect the germination, so you're not allowed to. This isn't a seed crop, so we can spray it with Roundup. So that basically kills off any bits that are still green. Um, it evens the whole field out, so you get a nice even crop. Um, so what we've done is we've kind of come into this a bit sharp. It'll be beneficial to do that because the rain's coming and it's going to negatively affect the crop um, in that way. So ideal conditions would have been another few days of sunshine and then combine it, but it's actually pretty close to being perfect. What the combine is doing, it's coming in, it's cutting the crop just down here. Then that crop then falls into the combine. It's all brought into the middle, goes through the combine. And then what it's trying to get is the individual peas on that head. And it wants to get rid of the ons, it wants to get rid of the straw and leave you with just clean, clean seeds. So I'll get a wee sample. So when we're doing a moisture meter, moisture reading, uh, take a head, take a few heads, and then just kind of crush it with your thumb and your palm. And then blow all the chaff and ons and anything off it. And then you're left with a relatively nice sample. So you get quite a lot of that and then you put it into a moisture meter and read it. But that's what the combine's doing, what I just did with my thumb, but on a mega scale and what it does with all the leftover bits the ons and any chaff and whatnot gets kind of scattered onto the ground underneath the straw bout so that's about the straw and that's what's um, left over once the heads have been taken off is the straw a winter barley crop we're looking for in the region of three to 3.5 ton 3.5 ton being good three ton being a bit meh this field's a bit of a dog leg um i'll show you actually i've got a map of it um so it'll just be popping up now, but it's a dog leg. So the top half uh, where we started at the gate, we'll cut that first and then we'll head down into the bottom bit. It kind of slopes off and down the hill. That's a new trailer. So that's the first time it's going to get used. 
moment of truth. I've gone 15 5, Dad's gone 16. Let's see what it'll be. 16 5. Could be 1% out, so I could be winning. There's a boom coming out, so I'll just swing in underneath. Do you see that coming off there? It's quite, it's a, a lot higher than our old boom used to be, uh, old auger on the old combine. Um, the old one was almost actually hitting the trailer sometimes, depending on if you're on a slope and whatnot. I should take about two and a bit tanks off of the combine. The old one would be, you'd squeeze three. This is a bigger tank, so about two and a half. There goes this boom back in, and we've got a wee bit of barley in the trailer. Tell you what, there's a good bit in there, I don't know if we'll get it. will be two, definitely, but I don't think we'll need much more than two. We'll see, on the old combine, you've got the grain tank, which is, was it? It's either 9,000 litres and the new one's 10, or it was 10,000 and the new one's 11. That's 1,000 more litres. So you've got, if you've got two empties, you've got 2,000 more litres, but also, while you're emptying, emptying you're still travelling. So that combine's going to combine a good bit more when you're travelling. So I think, I think two full loads will fill this trailer out, which would be good, actually. Don't really want to wait for a wee balance. It's just handy getting the whole thing emptied. And you'd rather stop the auger on that combine empty with that rather than having barley in it just for the sake of the motor starting up again, the belts and the drives, whatnot. A bit more oomph to start a, an auger which is full of grain than empty. Anyway, I'm just going to take a sample. It'll be a more representative sample now because it's out of the combine. It's not just picked by hand. Um, so it's a mixture of kind of everything he's done so far. There we go. That's more like it. 15.5. That was my guess. My guess before. But it's round about that. It's in the 15s, I would say. It's really, really hot now, so by the, by later on, by late afternoon, it could could come down a good bit. But no, that's perfect. We're quite happy with that. Just about to top off this trailer. You're not going to get a video of it because it's a lot higher than the old one. It's the first time I've done it, so just going to make sure I try and get it in the trailer for a start. Maybe next time you'll get a video of it. I say it myself, that is a well topped off trailer. I should have videoed that one. But yeah, it was actually okay. I thought it was going to be a wee bit harder. Just from the height it's coming from, picks up a good bit more speed coming down. So it kind of flushes out more rather than kind of building into a peak, which is easier to control when you're emptying it. But it was fine. Unloading, that will shift into the pit. Now this trailer's not new either. It's now a used trailer. Combine's a used combine. Um, bit sad, but I'm not accepting that there. They're new. They're new until they're old and scatty. Um, so we'll head back to the field now. Stop filming when the uh, green is coming off the back there. You'll see it just at the end, just at the end. Just fox that. Probably mind for filming, put the pressure on. Hey, while we're filling up, we're nowhere near the bout of straw now, which is great. Um, we don't want to run on it is because if there's any moisture or any rain comes it takes a lot longer to dry out when it's not as fluffy after being run over. Load number four, so I've done two, Kev's done two, we're sitting at about 55 ton sitting here, dad's obviously not got the dryer going. Give me some supplies, oh I'm hungry. Dead before the flasher comes on at 80% but it's actually 70%. So when that comes on, it's still 30% of the tank left. Just kind of allows you, if you're sitting at the other side of the field, to get over to the combine ready for getting empties. Rain in the distance there. Luckily, it's kind of a lot of the rain heads up and along those hills and misses us. So hopefully we'll stay clear all day. The combine's making it about 15.8% moisture, 15.8% moisture. Um, ranging from nine and a half to ten and a half tons per hectare which is really good happy with that um, and it's taking a wee bit of threshing it's not quite dead completely could do with another few days but the, the forecast is rain so we'll just crack on with it so that's it working there the barley's going in there's a knife down the bottom cuts them off the barley falls in and that auger you can see there well, it's one big piece and it draws it into the middle and it goes up through there. Threshing drums are kind of in this shape here. And then there's a straw walker up the top here that takes the straw up and down there. And then there's the sieves down the bottom that separate any of the chaff uh, from the, the actual crop, which is then recycled up into the tank. And then when you're finished, 
put the boom out in the empty. We've got this whole block up here done, so we're way down into the dog leg part of it. If we're in the old combine, it would have been a wee bit of a, a proper late one, I think, if we were to get it finished tonight. But that extra 25% getting us through, no bother. We're in my bed by 10. Everything's going real smoothly. Touch wood, touch wood. See the sun's getting low now, it's about 8 o'clock. We're getting through it, we should be done by 10. Um, this is my 7th seven, seven load. Getting a good yield off it as well. Crop looks good, it's dry, good yield. Straw's pretty dry, although it's going to rain soon, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but no, it's been a really good day, really good start for a new combine. Touch wood, the, that continues for the rest of the season and the combine's whole life actually. That's us. Kev's just getting the last wee bit that's left. I'm back home now, I've got a full trailer here. That was 57 acres in nine hours. That's a good jump up from the combine before. Big difference. Would be one to 11, half 11, maybe 12 at night if that was the last combine. Today's efforts, uh, Kev's still got a wee bit to, look, to bring in. The pit's away in the corner there, Dad's not starting it today just because he had a lot of other jobs to do and it's to be wet the next few days so we'll get on with it then. Trailer's empty, new trailer, had a good day with it today. Yep, good day. So Laurie there, they've been bringing in um, planings for the last kind of three days. I don't know what job they're doing but nearby they needed rid of planings so you get offered them at a discounted price and we're always using planings for the stand the other show. There's about three, four hundred ton come in, I think. Um, also, head along the road now to pick up the header and bring it back. It's the rain next few days, so don't want to leave it out in the field. Header's off. I'm going to put the trolley on the back of this tractor, and then we're going to both head back to farm number two. Don't try to go. I'm just going to head in front of him with a header. Phone call from Dad to be wary when we get on the road here because he's just been overtaken by a maniac. Keep an eye out for him get some seriously fast drivers along this road. Made it off the main road, no maniacs in sight. Take it up to this yard um, and then we'll park her up. In for the night, park her up and we'll all be off to get some tea. Quarter past nine. Pretty good day today.